we're going to be graphing and solving quadratic inequalities. The first kind of quadratic inequality we're going to work with is one in which there are two variables, both an x and a y. A couple of different ways you might see them show up. An inequality is something that has an inequality symbol instead of an equal sign. So we've got greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to graph a quadratic inequality using a couple of different kinds of technology. So the idea being when I graph a quadratic inequality, I'm looking for the set of points that are solutions to this particular inequality. There's probably a lot of them, so we're going to show it uh, by graphing it. Step one is to graph the boundary parabola of the inequality. So for this, I imagine that there's an equal sign here, and I graph the parabola, whatever it would happen to be. Uh, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but if I just had to guess, we'll say maybe it looks something like this. Okay, there's my boundary parabola. Now, I use a dashed or dotted parabola if I'm using the less than or greater than sign and there's no equal to underneath it. You could kind of equate that to working with uh, the open circle when you graphed inequalities a long, long time ago. So really over here this should be a dashed line, which I didn't use. I'll change this maybe. I'll erase this and make it a dashed guess. So again, this is just a guess, not in the right spot, but you get the idea. A dashed line, the dashed line indicating the points that are on the line aren't actually solutions because that's when the right side would equal the left side, which doesn't count. Now, if I had an or equal to symbol underneath, then I would use a solid line or solid parabola, and that would be similar to using the closed circle, which says, hey, include this point because that's where it's equal to that particular number. Now, once I got that figured out, what I do is I test a point inside or outside the parabola to see whether it's a solution. Because, you know, for an inequality, there's going to be lots of solutions. There might be the points that are inside, or it might be the points that are outside the parabola. My job is to test it. Easy point to test is 0, 0. I plug in 0, 0 into my equation. Does 0 plus 0 minus 4, is that less than 0? Uh, yes, it is. And if that's the case, that's a solution, and so will every other point that's inside of my parabola. Okay. Now, if it hadn't worked, then I'd say, okay, every other point outside of my parabola. So I shade the region that contains the solutions. Now, here's how you would do this using a couple of different kinds of technology. First, I'm going to use the TI-84 uh, Silver Edition, something you guys are probably used to. To graph it on my calculator, I need to first turn on the Inequalities app. Now, there's the Apps button right here, which you can click on. And then you scroll down until you get to the I's. They're in alphabetical order. Faster way is to click the alpha key and then I, which is right here. So alpha I takes me to inequals is the name of the application. I hit enter to turn it on. I say continue because it must already be on for me. So now all of a sudden I see in my y equals menu a couple of different inequality symbols. To use these, I hit the alpha key again and then select the correct key underneath the applicable symbol. So in this one that we're working with, it's Y is greater than. So I'm going to change my equal sign to a greater than symbol, which is right here. So alpha and then F4. So now I have a greater than symbol. And notice that it changes to a dashed line with shading, which is exactly what I need. And then I type in my inequality. So it was X squared plus 3X minus 4. And when I'm ready to go, I hit graph. And here comes a dashed line with some shading. So my guess wasn't too bad. Now if I was going to use a newer calculator like the TI-84 color, uh, it's just a little bit similar process, it's a couple of different things. So instead of turning on any inequalities app, uh, you simply highlight the equation button here. So I'll hit enter, and then it gives me some options. So now I go down to y equals, and instead of being y equals, I'm going to make it y is greater than. A couple of clicks, and I'm there. I hit OK to turn that on. And there we go. Then I type in my inequality. Again, it's x squared plus 3x minus 4. When I'm ready, I hit graph. And it will show, oh boy, my window's not great, but you'll see it. So I'm going to zoom 6. Anytime zoom 6, anytime your window doesn't look the way it should, Z standard takes you to the standard viewing window. So zoom 6 is the quick way to do that. There's my dashed line, shaded inside because 0, 0 was a solution. Very nice. The third and final way you could graph a quadratic inequality in two variables is by using Desmos. I could type in y is greater than, you can use the button right here or the button on your keyboard, y is greater than x squared, already start to see our parabola forming, plus 3x um, minus 4. And there we go. 
There's a notice again, a dashed line uh, with the shading right where it needs to be. I'll zoom out a little bit. Looks just like it did on the calculator. So multiple ways of graphing quadratic inequalities in two variables by using technology.